What's up, fam? What's up, Blair? Not much. Just setting it up right now. A lot of, you got, got notes on that fucking refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm about to. I'm about you to your motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love. God damn. How do I do we don't need to see him. Let's keep going on shit. I love Markham. I don't need to see him right now, though. Okay, Marcel. Remember, there's a way you can pause it. Remember that? Pause the recording. Yeah, it's definitely recording now. I think that means we're live. No. Oh, you're in LA. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So we're all up early. I've been up since six. Have you? Yeah. Yo. How do? How do? Everything's good. Oh, you looking low? You looking like you were out last night? For real? For real. Oh. <laughs> trying, to, trying to get it in before the well. shutdown. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So wow. I see DSR is up there, but um, we don't have any picture or anything. I figured Jabril is the coolest one. He'll he'll, he'll be he'll be he'll be sliding in late. <laughs> <laughs> you know, DSR had straight. to go get pretty. You know, he you know he had to rub some <laughs> nuts and berries on his face. He is pretty. He can't <laughs> help. Rise. What's going on, man? What's up with my man Cheesy? He's good, man. He's at school right now, trying to get you know get active and play some play some ball a little bit, man. Tell him I said, what's up, man? I got you. I got you. Yes, All right, sir. fellas. I'm clicking on live so you can keep up the chatter till uh, till Jabril comes in. Um, but I'm probably going to go ahead and get it started. And he can just jump well, in when he comes in. Well, let me just say, I, I'm, I'm about to hop out. I'll be the, the guy behind the, the, the closet. Um, but I just want to thank you guys for coming. And uh, look for an email for me, from me after this. Um, All right. Have a good show. Thanks, Mark. Right. Thank you. All right. The RT Power on. Andrew Ashanti. Seems you don't have camera. Bluetooth connected. Thanks again, fellas, for taking our time on your Sunday. No problem. So we're just getting set up over here. My apologies. This is, a, this, is a, this is a common thing with Hoya Locker Room. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, 10.02 a.m., my apologies for the late start. Uh, this is Hoya Locker Room, episode 30. Um, I say this every time. I mean, this, this is truly special. Um, we have a special guest, Andrew Jameson, class of 90. Ashante Cook's in the building. DSR's in the building. And we're waiting on uh, Jabril, but we're going to go ahead and get it rolling. Uh, my, my goal or my thought process uh, in terms of doing this show was DSR was dropping the track, right? And, and I saw that and I was like, man, that's so dope. Um, I, I, I I, I want to shout it out. I want to support him in any way that I can. Um, but I don't, you know, I'm not a music guy. I don't have any music connects. And Ashanti's been on the show uh, before. And the fact that he's come back speaks volumes to me. Like, I can't thank you enough for coming back for this pain. And uh, <laughs> I met Andrew a while back, a uh, couple of weeks back, a month back, whatever. And just a, a dope guy, great energy. Uh, we had a great conversation. And he's in the entertainment business. He's been in the entertainment business for 30 years. And I'm saying to myself, we got dudes that are doing this entertainment stuff. So we're Hoyas. Why can't we do some type of episode or do some type of discussion where we're sitting down, chopping it up, 
best practices, ideation type things and um, sharing some stuff. So um, I, I guess with that, Andrew, you're the, you're the, you're the, you're the virgin here. Um, <laughs> and you know, I, I got your stats here, but why don't you share with us a little bit uh, what you've been doing for the last 30 years uh, ah. since you left the Hilltop. And you can be succinct because uh, I sent out uh, your, your, your video was 1789. So we kind of, we kind of, we know what we're dealing with here. So uh, we'd love to, love for you to share with the, maybe the three or four people that are watching live, but hopefully many more will, will pick this up. Well, one of the benefits of being a producer is you know how to pitch it in 30 minutes or 30 seconds. So I'll give you the 30 second version. Um, first of all, happy to be here. Good to see you guys. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I was a fan of what you guys were doing on the court. I'm a fan of what you guys are doing off the court. Um, I left the Hilltop and I wanted to be in the entertainment industry. I became an entertainment lawyer. Uh, and when I was 10 years into my practice, I literally was sitting up at night in Fox Plaza, which is Nakatomi Plaza from Die Hard, if you remember that building. Mm -hmm. And man, I was on the phone with some producers and writers I was working with on a deal and I just realized their life was better than mine. They were having more fun than I was. And I came from a creative family of actors and writers and dancers and sculptors. And I was always kind of like the outcast because I chose to be a lawyer. So I decided to take the plunge and become creative. So I ended up going ahead and um, uh, working for a producer who was a lawyer. And then he taught me how to become a producer. Uh, and from that, I mean, I'm a hundred episodes of television in. Uh, I have uh, worked with the likes of George Clooney and, and, and to, to Matt Damon, to CeeLo Green, to uh, these days I'm working a lot with Tisha Campbell. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's a wide variety of people from all different backgrounds. And uh, you know, I've, I've been fortunate enough to be able to uh, be one of those producers that's in Los Angeles that's actually produced something. So I, I, I count my blessings for that. Appreciate that, appreciate that. Um, Ashanti, I'm gonna jump to you because you and uh, Andrew are kind of living in the same world. And, you know, uh, you've done, you've done, you know, you've done work. Um, yeah. Where did that, how did that start? Where did that emanate from? Uh, once you left the Hilltop, is that something you thought about? Um, yeah, so just, just give us your journey. Um, so I took some uh, acting classes at Georgetown and then um, it kind of sparked the interest there. But uh, after I finished, um, after I graduated from Georgetown, then I went and played overseas for some years, for like six, seven years. And then um, I did uh, a commercial. My first commercial was with Pepsi and I saw like how much you could make, like, <laughs> um, you know, just like dribbling a basketball, using your talent basketball wise, like within that space. So it was definitely something I wanted to revisit and take a little bit more serious uh, once I was done playing. So. Um, I got into classes and um, just started to like try and connect. That's what I'm, you know, kind of figured early on um, that a lot of this stuff is like who you know, you know, like within the business, it's like who you know. And so a lot of my friends, they were already repped by different sports agencies, sports commercial agencies. So I had gobble one and then I just started booking stuff <laughs> left and right, um, sports stuff. And then um, I started taking uh, different acting classes. And then found an agent, got referred to an agent. And then I booked my uh, first TV show last year. Uh, no, two years ago. I'm sorry. Two years ago, uh, which is Better Call Saul. So I play a lawyer on that. Um, I saw so you. Three episodes on that. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, and then I got into sports coordinating as well. So I worked with LeBron James last year for Space Jam and was uh, one of the basketball advisors for that. So, so yeah, so I'm getting my foot in a lot of just different areas. So, um, And then due to the pandemic, I've um, actually started to get into writing as well. Uh, a friend of mine so so yeah so you know just that's trying dope. to keep the creative process going yeah that's dope dsr no names um were you were you rapping in the locker room back in the day um is it, has that always been a passion for you what's that journey been like um because obviously um it's 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 popular uh it, it's 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 a crowded feel but I, I think not only with with that yellow hoodie do you not stand out but I think you stand out in and of itself so how how's your journey been uh, it's been good man I've um it's been a long journey just trying to really uh get into it can you guys hear me can you hear me yeah okay, good if you um, if you can if you can bring yeah, it up a little bit though 
Okay, I got you. Yeah, I'm hard of hearing. I'm the oldest one on the call, so I'm, 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 <laughs> is, that, is that is that better? That's awesome. Okay, good. Uh, but yeah, it's been a long journey. I mean, uh, my family, you know, we were uh, banking on basketball. A lot, a lot of them were. Uh, so you know, the transition has been uh, pretty tough for them to, um, you know, see it because you know it's it's different. You know what I mean? It's not what they expected. But uh, for me, it's been a great journey. Uh, it's been a creative process. It's been something that I've always done. Uh, it's funny. I, I wish Jabril was on this call because that was the first person that when I was at school, I went to the studio with, and, oh, um, you know, Jabril was, yeah, Jabril was heavy into like, you know, being a rapper and all this stuff. And at the time I was more of like a writer. Like I wrote a lot of books, um, a lot of things that I never like really got to dive into because I was so focused on basketball at the time. Um, but, you know, once I was like, you know, basketball is, is just so much wear and tear. And, you know, I was dealing with injuries and stuff like that. And I'm like, you know, why would I do that when I feel like I can be the same brand or the same, you know, person to entertain people or anyone who's a fan of mine or, you know, in interested in what I'm doing? Um, you know, I just thought it was another great way for me to reach people and be able to communicate to them, you know, what I truly feel and, you know, also tell them, you know, what I what I go through kind of daily basis and stuff so it's, it's cool man I love it I love it yeah I immediately think of when I think of Hooper and rapper I think of uh uh is it I'm dating myself but you know the, the uh slim thug not slim thug but you know who I'm talking about dude with the braids um six five six four he owns a WNBA or a C, uh CBA team or a G League team oh uh uh two chains two chains sorry I'm dating myself Andrew I'm dating myself <laughs> but but I whenever I think about the rap I think about two chains but I also wanted Jabril on this call because I'm trying to figure out why you two aren't in the studio together yeah so oh. so me and Jabril have been talking about that we we talked about it a lot he's in it he's based in Atlanta now when mm -hmm. like uh, you know, like Ashanti said, once the quarantine hit, I came back to Indianapolis. My family is based here. So I, you know, I needed to make sure that I took care of everyone. And, you know, I kind of did that from a distance living in California at the time. But now, you know, I got to be a little bit more hands on and make sure that everybody's squared away. Um, you know, my grandparents, they live with my actual parents. So I have them in one, you know, stationary got position it. where I can help them. And then, um, you know, it's, it's tough right now just to be able to maneuver, you know, with him being in Atlanta. Uh, we, you know, we send tracks, we do a lot of things. We just, you know, it, I want it to be, cause I take it very seriously. You know, I've been invested in this for about two, three years now, like true, you know, true to the craft and learning the craft and stuff like that. So um, anything that I put out now is a representation of myself. And I, you know, I want it to be um, very presentable and something that we both, you know, feel proud of. Love it. Andrew, I'm going to defer to you a lot in terms of, you know, because you, you're the guru on this call. And what, what I've heard from both of those individuals is it's pretty much been a passion thing. They're self-starters. Um, and, and I mentioned, I mentioned earlier in the, in the pre, in the pre, pre game, um, how um, I listened to you before and I, and, I, and I know what your keys to success are um, in terms of the passion, do the little things, be on time, all the things as a hooper that are already ingrained in you. But what, what, what I want from you obviously is to, how do we make this a Georgetown thing? How do we make this where we're working with each other, where we're benefiting from each other? Um, I, I know you're on the board of Regents and you're a co-chair of communications. So who better to talk about that than you? Yeah, well, you know, um, I've been on the board of governors for three years and- oh, board of, um, my Apologies. No, no worries. See, the, the Regents are the ones who put up the big money. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, they put up the money. Well, you know, you had the Prada hanger, so I got kind of thrown <laughs> off. <laughs> That's right. That's right, the Prada hanger. Um, but, but for me, I mean, look, um, in Los Angeles, USC is, is the gold standard for alumni loyalty, I think. Mm. Everyone that you go to USC and, and you have a bond with, with hundreds of thousands of people, they... They, they reach out to you and take care of you like one of their own. And especially in the entertainment world. And I've always been envious of that because I, my wife went to film school uh, at SC. I, I, I go to that community quite a bit because she's very involved there like I am at Georgetown. And so I began 
stealing some of their best practices and applying them to, to Georgetown. Because in the communications world, what I said was, look, USC has fight on, right? USC has that white horse. They have all these traditions. Right. And, but Georgetown has, to my mind, even better traditions that they don't even tap into, that passion, that spirit, right? The beautiful nature of the campus, the bells, all the things that make it great, right? Hoya Saxa. I mean, what kind of cheer is Hoya Saxa? It's completely unique. So I started saying as part of the Board of Governors, let's, let's remind our alumni base of that passion. Let's remind them of, of what it is to be a Hoya, the blue and the gray, and all the things, the iconic things that, that, that are, are special about our shared experience. And let's use that as a foundation for connection, right? And so if you look at what we're doing on the Board of Governors, we have these interviews initiatives, 1789 seconds, I believe you are going to be a guest on it next month, Gene. So congratulations on that. Oh, thank thank you for, for thank that. you for letting me know. <laughs> yeah. That's, what do you think I'm showing up here for? I'm making sure I'm reminding you. Um, so so look to my mind, guys. The 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 key here is to we've already got great DNA as Hoyas, but we have not. We're we're, we're like you know when a puppy's got big paws and it doesn't know what to do with it. That's mm -hmm. what I look at in terms of alumni engagement and connection between Hoyas, especially in the entertainment space, because we've got so many people working in entertainment that are Hoyas, and we have just begun to scratch the surface about making those types of connections and building that network that places like USC have done so brilliantly. Awesome, I mean, because again, that, that I put out there that the topic would be personal branding um, and, and how to, you know, I've been, lending, I've been listening to Benny the Butcher DSR and he's he talks about it's not just branding, it's about expanding. And I, I think that's what Andrew just touched on. How do we expand? How, how, how do we better utilize our resources? So I guess for me, for starters, I've been in LA off and on now, Andrew, since 2010. My middle son graduated from Loyola. I know you're a Westlake guy over there. Um, <laughs> And, and, and for me, it's like, um, you know, I, I, I want to get involved with the LA alumni uh, just because, right? It just, just to exchange ideas, just to rub elbows, just to network. And, and I bring this up because both Ashanti and DSR can attest to this. This is not something we did while we were at Georgetown, while we were on the hilltop. Right. And, and that to me is the, the bigger miss. Not that these guys are... You know, Ashante, 2006 you graduated? Yeah, 2006. DSR, 2017? 16. 16. It's not that we're old news. Well, I'm old news, but it's just one of those things where, you know, if we're doing these things while we're on campus, to me, it makes that much more sense. So that's kind of what I want to push forward. But then if you have somebody like DSR that's, that's dropping a, a track or he's in the music game, where Mahoy is at to connect with that? So... I, I guess that we have to make that push. We have to make it intentional. Um, and I mean, that's what this show is all about. I mean, I think um, personal branding is nonstop. It's obviously more prevalent today than it ever was. Um, so I guess I'm gonna ask each of you, maybe not you, Andrew, cause I kinda know what you think. Uh, I'm gonna ask DSR and Shante, this personal branding thing, what does that mean to you and how have you focused on that or how have you elevated that from just being a hooper? Hey, you wanna go first, DSR? <laughs> <laughs> that was a heavy one, that's a long one. <laughs> Look, hey, well, somebody got, somebody got to dive in there, man. But, uh, <laughs> I'll, 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 say, I'll say this, I, uh, as far as branding, I'm, I'm more conservative, you know, if, you, if you've ever watched me play, you know, I don't really, I was never like a loud, you know, person or like you could see expression a lot of the time. So like now, if um, I had your game, you I wouldn't know. have been loud either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Well, you know, well, this is my chance to, you know, say what I got to say. You know what I mean? So I, I kind of use this platform um, to be creative, like I said, and to um, reach people that I probably thought I could never reach and, you know, to let them know who I am uh, to an extent. And, you know, like I said, I've always been in a shell. I come from Indiana, Indiana, Indianapolis, you know what I mean? Where a lot of people on the East Coast at the time, um, it was, you know, unique, you know what I mean? And being in Washington, D.C., um, not a lot of family around, not a lot of people. So I had to be diverse in just my communication and being able to reach people. Um, so I feel like now 
I've been given a platform that at the time I wish I would have taken advantage of it while I was in school. Um, you know, whereas now I'm fulfilling that. And I feel like uh, as far as branding, you know, reaching people like Andrew, reaching Ashanti, um, and you, you know, you bringing us all together in, in one space and collective, I think this will, um, this is like a step in the right direction, you know, being here with you guys and being able to talk with you guys so we can, we can build off of it. I think, um, you know, another thing that I've started to do is be more social, like active on social media and stuff like that. Um, using platforms, using uh, resources, you know, that was kind of part of the reason why I was going out to California too. And at the time I didn't know Ashanti had lived there until, you know, like I would say literally the month before quarantine had picked up. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? And I, I contacted him and I'm like, yo, you know, I live here now pretty much. And he's like, all right, cool. Well, we need to link. And next thing you know, my friend, I had another friend named Kevin that I was with at the time. He's like, man, quarantine is getting started in two weeks. So you won't be able to leave the house. And I'm like, this is <laughs> crazy. crazy. But, uh, you know, I, I think that's, a you know, another way uh, for us to just, you know, build use our resources, connect with, you know, who we know and um, reach out to those that, that we can reach. Right. Yeah, I agree. I agree totally uh, with DSR. Um, I never really thought about branding. Um, I kind of figured that if you, you know, you do the work, it work will speak for itself and then you kind of create your own situation. But I guess you do have to think about and be conscious of like what it is that you want to promote as an individual and what you want to be represented as. So, um, I guess I'll have to think about that a lot more. I don't have an answer for you right now as far as like what I want to promote as far as my brand. But um, I do wish that on campus, like while I was at school, that we had those um, opportunities and outlets to reach people within the entertainment industry and within the different um, areas of, uh, of, of, you know, work, you know, I don't recall ever having like the opportunity to meet Andrew or, you know, anybody else within that entertainment space. You know, I thought that would have been very helpful because it would have gave you something else to think about once like sure. you were done playing basketball, you know. So um, I've been to a couple of GEMA events, you know. Um, I've been to a couple of GEMA events like probably a couple of years ago. I've been to a couple of them, but um, I really didn't find them like kind of productive. <laughs> uh, honestly, a lot of them, like every time I went there, they, they always wanted to talk about basketball, <laughs> you know, so. Um, um, but I, I, I definitely think this is the step in the right direction though, that you're doing Gene and getting people and reaching out to your resources and, and bringing just different walks of life, um, from Georgetown to try and connect and make this a Georgetown thing and, and, and build it stronger. So. And I see Andrew chomping at the bit. I'm just, I'm just going to say, I'm just, <laughs> he took it off of mute. So I know he's ready. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to say I, I I I appreciate what both of you said, and 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 I agree. And what I would piggyback on that with the, what I would piggyback on is just to say, we we have the resources. It's in our DNA. It's in our it's in our it's in the university ethos, personal service, um, and and looking out for each other. I just think, and basketball comes up in probably every conversation for every Hoya. I mean, that, that, that's, that, that's just going to happen. It may be soccer now because soccer is off the charts, right? Yeah. It may be now it's a soccer conversation. Yeah. But with that being said, I, Andrew, I know you got some points to make, but if you could also add to that storytelling. Because when, because when I see both of you guys, I just think of the stories that just emanate just from your experiences. And that's a part of branding. Mm -hmm. So just being able to tell your stories and some of it's visual, some of it's it obviously is. through um, it the way you communicate. So yeah, Andrew, take that ball and uh, run with it. So, and I alluded to this in the 1789 that I did, but I'll share it. Um, and this is an example of how I really realized we all have a personal brand that affects people, right? So there is a restaurant in LA called Medeo, very nice Italian restaurant, very popular, very hard to get into. And so I was literally at this restaurant and I kept ordering the same bottle of wine. Okay. And it was called Banfi Italian. It was nice. And, um, the way the, uh, the owner would always say, Oh, you always ordered the Banfi. Oh, okay. Mr. Banfi. And he would call me Mr. Banfi. And I'm like, well, actually it's Jameson, but cool. Call me Banfi if you want. <laughs> so, so literally he's like, and then we, we struck up a conversation. He said, you know, anytime you want the reservation, let me know. And so I called him like, I don't know, three weeks later. 
And I said, uh, hey, you know, uh, Nicola, it's Andrew Jameson. How are you? Uh, I'd like to get a reservation. And he's like, uh, and I was like, oh, okay. So you call me Mr. Bonfi? And he goes, oh yeah, it's Mr. Bonfi, what time? And I'm like, geez, this guy knows me from a bottle of wine that I ordered. You know, this has become my personal brand with this guy, but for whatever reason, that's what stuck in his mind. That's what I've become known for. And I've been able to go to the restaurant and have a really, you know, really great meals and, and not have a hassle. And so it, it occurred to me that when we're going through life, there are things that differentiate us from other people, right? Something as silly as the wine you order, right? There's a friend of mine who's an architect. When he was coming up, he had a purple pen that he used to mark up all the drawings that were there. And everyone knew if that was a purple pen, okay, that was his, right? That was his particular stamp. And so I took those lessons to heart and sort of said, you know what, as you're telling, and uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg, right? The, the executive, when he was a, a, an executive at, uh, at Paramount, he was known as the golden retriever, which is to say anything you needed, if you were his boss, he would go get it. There's a famous story when there was a Michael Eisner, his boss at the time, they were going to the gate at an airport and the plane was leaving. And he said, Katzenberg, stop that plane. And he ran, Katzenberg runs to the gate and all of a sudden you see the plane go and then come back, okay? And that's a legendary story, but that's what he got to be known for. So as you're coming up, as you're building your own personal brand, it's important to think about moments like that because we're all in competitive businesses, you know? Music is very competitive. When you're trying to figure out what your style is, what you're, you know, as an actor, those, these are all things that come into play because, you know, you don't want to be lumped in with everyone. You want to be able to find your voice, find what makes you unique, and then, and then promote that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and again, thinking, well, I just muted myself, thinking about you two individuals, obviously, you know, you're, you're coming with, you know, you're coming with weight, right? You, you're coming with experiences behind you. And not that you have to lead with it, but I just think as you guys go through your journey, there's so many touch points that I think you can you can expound on, whether it be, you know, DSR, I checked you out in the when you did the no names joint and just the way you're the way you laid it out. Um, and you're conservative, but you're in a game that's not conservative, right? You're, you're in a rap game. So maybe you become a conscious rapper, or whatever it is. But I just think along your way, you you, you gotta find your 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 whatever your hustle is, you gotta find out whatever your strengths are. And then to me, um, the, the natural thing is, okay, we're from Georgetown University. So where can I find advice? Where can I find someone to pull me up? I, I am so frustrated at myself. I worked it and obviously I don't, I don't, I try not to interject myself into these things, but I was at Nike for 20 plus years. I don't ever recall um, going back to campus or going back on the hilltop and letting every single solitary person on the team know this is an unbelievable hustle, mm. right? Like the, the, the extensions here, the tentacles here, the things that you can do, the, the people that you meet right. um, in different industries. So again, the onus is not only just on the university, it's on every individual, I think, that comes to the hilltop. And that's right. kind of what I want to bring the focus. And obviously, um, you know, I, I, I'm particular, I'm intentional about Georgetown basketball. Um, but when I, when I meet somebody like Andrew, I, I see the, the opportunity, I see how organic it should be. Um, but I'd like you both to kind of chime in on that. Or if you have something for Andrew, please feel free um, to, cause I want, I want this to be conversational. Right, gotcha. Uh, I, I actually have a question for Andrew cause um, I know you produced, you're a producer and you produce like hundred episodes uh, in TV. So I was always under the assumption that the producer was like the money guy. <laughs> so like the one that does the funding for like the project. So what is it that, what is the, the, the job title of the producer for TV or for film? So I always say that, you know, TV is as a producer is more like uh, NASCAR racing. Like okay. everyone's, got, everyone's got the same car. You can't buy a better car. You just have to out hustle the next person because the money is typically put up by the network. So you just okay. have to work on the idea. And in, a, in the film business, you can be a wealthy guy from out of town and you come in and they're like, they need you to, they need $5 million to complete the film and you become a producer at that point, right? Mm. But all you're producing is the money. You know what I mean? Like here. So uh, on the TV side, it's much more, I think, democratic in that respect. So 
you know, as, as someone who produces, and I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Okay. Uh, Tisha Campbell came to me uh, six months ago with a story of a woman who uh, used to be trafficked and then decided to rescue women, got out of the game and, be, and started to rescue young women. And I was blown away by the story. And we began to shape the narrative. I met the woman, Tony Rivera. I was blown away by her story. It was raw. And I said, I'd like to do a documentary series based upon uh, your story. And I began, I had signed a first look deal with ITV America, which is a big independent studio of un, un, uh, unscripted documentaries. And we began packaging the project. We just announced it and we're locking in a, uh, uh, a network as we speak. And so at, for me as a producer on that project, it's sort of identifying the idea, making sure that it is the correct presentation, right? For, for networks and buyers and assembling a team and packaging that great nucleus of an idea and, and realizing it fully into something that can become a documentary series on television. So yeah. that, that's an example of, of, of how I produce unscripted. Uh, there's another uh, uh, scripted project that I sold to own that, again, someone called me back in April and said, I have this idea based on a, a story, uh, a true story. And we began writing uh, pages together just to try to figure out what made sense. And so we sold it to own, I don't know, three months ago when we're looking for writers to go ahead and, and write and write the series. So it, it just it, there. The term producer is very kind of vague. I mean, there's a lot of different things that you do. I mean, when I think of a producer, I think of someone that just fixes problems. Right. Okay. That, that, You're like a manager. That, yeah. I mean, in some respect. Yeah. It's, yeah. Hey, look, when I when I was CeeLo Green's producing partner, man, I was I handled a lot of stuff that I didn't think I was going to have to handle. You know <laughs> what I mean? I mean, there there was the, the, when you're dealing with creative people, there are needs that go beyond the scope of simply just, you know, packaging and selling. I mean, you know, when you're on set, you have to address your partner's concerns, needs creatively. And, and, and Lo and I did that, you know, and so. Um, and that involved a lot of trips to Atlanta. You know, I mean, all the guys in the Goody Mob are like, you know, relatives to me, right? Because because you really, if you're going to be a good partner, right, and a good producer, you're really going to have to immerse yourself in whatever you do with whomever you are, because otherwise, you're you're not doing your partner a service or the project a good service. Got it. DSR. I, w I want to be a little. Uh, um, yeah, I, I want to go a little deeper on your on your deal. Um, you, because you had a couple tracks before No Names, correct? Yes. Um, so who are you working with? Um, you know, how did you start? How are you, where are you at in, in the process? Um, because obviously I, I want to put it out there because if there's anyone listening that's from the hilltop on the blue and gray, um, it, should, it, should, it should be outreach. It should be an outreach for you. Yeah, so... Um... Right now, I would say just in our process, um, we're at the point of just dotting our I's and crossing our T's. Um, we have a you know a ton of projects that we've worked on and um, have come together. My producer, his name is Brandon Real. He's super dope. He's uh he's probably 20 minutes away from me. He, he's from like Greenwood, Indiana. Um, really cool guy. Uh, super laid back. Um, he played baseball, you know, in, in the state of Indiana. He was really good, um, super cool dude. But we we met through a mutual friend, um, Sam Burrow, who's here, um, works with a company called Top View, which is pretty dope. It's a marketing company um, based out of Indianapolis. Um, but right now, I think we are just trying to continue to create and continue to tell our story and where we come from and uh, build on it, obviously, um, and, and reach our maximum uh, with our connections. I think for me, it's just continuing the grind. I mean, I've, I felt like I've been through this process before, just in a different format with playing basketball. Right. It's, it's the same thing. If I don't get the repetition or I'm not in the studio 90% of the time, then I don't feel like I'm uh, maximizing what I can, you know, potentially become. And I think I'm starting to see that considering, you know, the project that I just put out, uh, I would say that's the first time I felt that um, at any moment, with anyone that that could really be, um, you know, a foot in the door or, you know, at least a door opening up the avenue for me to um, take that next step. Yeah, I, I, want, I wanted that, that launch because not the countdown. I wanted that to be on every Georgetown platform mm -hmm. you know, because, sure. because again, that's intentional to me, you know, and uh, I hope you, I, I know you're going to keep it up. I know you're going to, yeah. you know, I know you're going to be successful, whatever that is. 
Um, but yeah, I just want you to know, um, you know, your, your crew's behind you. Like we're, we're definitely dialed in. Um, I hope you and Jabril definitely collab. I just think that's organic. Oh, we will. We but, will. but, but, but something you touch, <laughs> some, some, something you touched on that's, I think, like the most important thing when you're talking about branding or your, your personal brand is being authentic, right? Being who you are, like don't deviate from who you are. Um, and again, you know, I, I, uh, guys in Hollywood may differ, but if you deviate from who you are, then you know, you, down the road that might catch up to you. I'm sure you may take a project for money. I mean, I, I, you get the bag, um, but, but, but at the end of the day, know your sweet spot, know what you represent. And obviously when you get to a point where you can call your own shots, that, that's ideal. Mm. But I, I just think authentic, um, that's, that's, that's what I wanted Hoya Locker Room always to be. Um, you know, my, 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 my producer who hates when I, when I bring up his name, Markham Stansbury, um, <laughs> says to me all the time, watch the language. And, I, and I'm saying to him, yo, dude, that's just me. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I, I, I'm not trying to come across any other way other than, you know, uh, mm -hmm. representing who I am and where I come from. And I also tell him, when you're on the show with Michael Graham and John Turner, you got to curse. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't not curse. Um, but Andrew, I'd, lo I'd love to hear your, your points on being authentic. I mean, you know, we go decades in our lives trying to figure out who we are, right? Trying to find out what our true voice is. And it's a journey we all have to go through. And I think, uh, look, for me, authenticity is everything you possibly can, can focus on as an artist. Um, and, and DSR, I, I will say to you that, you know, in music, I have seen so many artists that have been shaped inauthentically by other people. People will say, oh no, man, your, your hair has to be blue. Oh no, 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 no. You wanna be, you wanna be, you wanna be really hard. You gotta be hard on this. And, and, and one of the things, and I'll go back to the Goodie Mob just for a second. These were guys that loved Atlanta. And these were guys that, that had, and the famous line is the South has something to say. And this was, and this was their vehicle for that. All right, these were guys that grew up that were friends that said, you know what? And they saw what was going on in New York at the time, you know, in hip hop. And they said, you know what? South has something to say. And that's, and that authenticity brought out an album like Soul Food, which if you haven't checked out, I encourage you to do because it is, it is a, a, a seminal work in the, in, in the game. And, you know, that authenticity for me in my life took me from being a lawyer to being a producer because I, I discovered my DNA 10 years into my practice that it was, creativity that moved me and the ability to tell a story that that people get shaped by because I got shaped by stories I got shaped by music and tv shows and films and it was powerful for me it, it, it impacted who I was and I wanted to have that same impact on people's lives in a positive way but it took me a minute to figure that out so you know um but for me authenticity is something I strive for my personal life and my professional life and my relationships with people. And, and Gene, you know this, even though we haven't known each other that long, it's just, I mean, you, you've got to, in a world, of, especially in Hollywood, where things are so duplicitous sometimes and, and not what they seem, you stand out in a good way by being someone who actually means what they say and delivers on what they promise. So with that, this is when I knew Andrew was, a, 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 about it, about it, and, and authentic. You have to show the jacket. <laughs> you have to show the jacket. All right, so. And the story behind it, please. All right, so I was at Georgetown in the late 80s. And back then, to have a satin starter jacket <laughs> was everything, right? Like I was a Dodger fan and they had satin jackets and I was like, I gotta get one of those. And, th and then Georgetown had one. And I was working at the alumni house and there was an alumni publication at that time called Hoya Saxa. And it was just, I would go to games and I would write up stories about the team and then they would, get, they would send them out, right? They would send them out to, uh, to alums, right? 
And so I got myself the jacket, the starter jacket, and then I customized the back of it because you know, it's I, I've, got to, I've got to make it my <laughs> own. I found a guy, and this is how I probably knew I was going to become a producer because only an 18 year old kid would go in like the Valley in, in Los Angeles and like look for like a, a, someone who, sh you know, who could customize the patch on the back. So, so here's, here's the, here's the jacket. Oh, that's smooth. <laughs> and, and then, and then this is, and this is the custom. That's smooth. <laughs> <laughs> like Ben just holding out on us, man. That, that jacket is crazy right there, yeah. man. So, so I'm looking at, so, so check this out. I'm looking at whoever doing the bookstore or whoever's making product. Y'all need to bring Andrew out there to let him help you out. Cause that's, yeah, that's, definitely. I was like, okay, this dude all right with me. I, 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 can, have, I can have a conversation. He, he brought the pain. Well, you know what? Let me tell you something. That that I told you the story with Tisha Campbell, right? So Tisha, Tisha and I were first getting to know each other. And you know, it's always like a like a like a dance, right? Like, do I trust this guy? Whatever. We went from having one project together, and then the, when I when I did this, we've got like ten. Okay. <laughs> something about the jacket was like, okay, this says something about you that says like, okay, I, I understand you now. So so when when Andrew shared that story with me, I, I'm thinking to myself, I I, I know we got cats in the entertainment world, and I know they're hustling. And again, if, if, if you're from the program, I know your work ethic is, is gonna be on point. So it's, again, it's just a matter of the, the, the you know, the things, the, the, reach one, teach one. It's just, how do we pull each other along through this? And again, this, this episode came to my mind with you, DSR. Just the fact that you were getting ready to launch this track. And I'm like, how can I support this dude? Um, I mean, my music game, you know, I, I got Benny the Butcher and I got the new Buster Rhymes. That's in my ear right now. That's nice. You got two good ones then. Yeah, my son helped me out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I do that on my own. But, um, you know, I, I really, I really want to thank you guys for coming through. It's a Sunday. It's a game day. Uh, I don't know if you guys are still following the Hoyas, um, but I'm, pre I'm pretty sure you are on some level. Oh, um, and DSR, I know you got the pregame joint. I'm gonna check you out. But I just really want to thank you guys. I'm, I'm gonna kind of cut this kind of short. I'm gonna get yelled at later for cutting it short. But I, again, maybe we'll do this again um, because I, th I think you know I'm not putting any pressure on Jima because it may not just be about Jima. I'm not putting any pressure on the the board of regents or the board of governors. If we have to do this ourselves, we can. Mm. I mean, it's just too easy. Um, you know, this this pandemic has has I think affected us all in a you know in, in a way that none of us could have thought about or imagined. Um, but the flip side of that is is something like this, right? And I, I mean, I encourage everyone to you know to me, it's, it's just knock on the door. I mean, I, I I've been known to kick in the door, but it's just one of those things where you want to tap on the door and you just reach out to people. And if they don't come back, if they got ass burgers or whatever it is, it, 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 it's okay. You know, it's, it's not personal. Some of it's business, but everything about Georgetown to me is personal on some level. So I just encourage you, Ashanti, you DSR, man. If you see a Georgetown behind somebody's name, hit them in the head. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Because there's no way if you come through those gates, you're not proud of, the basketball program. You're not proud of what it's done for the university. And the flip side of that, there's no way you walk through those gates and you're not proud of what the university stands for. Right. So again, I, I think it's a win-win. Um, I think it's something that we should you know, just be intentional about. Um, and I actually have two quotes uh, that I kind of want to share. And then uh, I would appreciate if each of you had you know, some, some sign off. Um, so my two quotes for the day were, um, if there is a path before you, Someone has left has left the way forward. So, you know, whatever you guys are embarking upon, there's somebody, and it might not be they were uh, a musician, but there's somebody that's in that field that has already opened the door for you. You just gotta maybe go find them. Mm. And then the second join is focus is the bridge between explanation and application. So. Mm. Where we're at, right? Let's focus on this. Let's let's be intentional about helping each other out in our respective fields, right? And and the fact that Ashanti and DSR connected, 
that's a, that's how it should that should be a natural thing. Right. You know, like I said, I'm the oldest dude on the phone. I gotta be honest, I'm gonna get yelled at again. Uh, this is not my this is not my my flow. Like I'm, I'm not a guy who wants to be in front of the camera talking to people. I'm 75 years old. I got I got other things to do. Um, <laughs> but but again, um, if not now, when? And what I'm hoping is this Hoyer locker room platform gets passed along to somebody after they graduate, or you know, it becomes a communication vehicle to kind of you know, kind of be a conduit. Um, so again, that, that's my sign off. Like I said, I appreciate if each of you can say a parting word. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sundays are, you know, I mean, Sundays are a day of rest, but I guess we're all getting enough rest these days. Getting a lot of rest. Nah, um, I guess my big thing is, uh, well, first of all, thanks again, Gene, for having me on. Appreciate it. Always enjoy uh, having a conversation with you on this platform. You Just think I'm out of my mind, Shanti. I see the way you look at me. What? No, man, I'm serious. Like, I appreciate it, man. Like, nah, I, even though I hit you up on the side sometimes, and you know, to pick your brain about things, I, I appreciate you just being open and um, just to be able to have a conversation. Um, thanks again, Andrew, for, for coming on and um, spreading some knowledge about uh, the entertainment business and, and, and the game. I'll definitely be reaching out to you and asking you some more questions. So, <laughs> and uh, DSR, man, yeah, when you come back to LA, brother. <laughs> We got a link. We got a link. But um, my biggest thing to everybody is just, you know, just enjoy the journey. That's what I've been learning in this whole process, just enjoying the journey um, and just um, finding the beauty within the struggle. You know, I know it sounds cliche, but uh, but yeah, it is. It is. It is. Um, there is beauty in the struggle. You know, like you can look back on it and be like, dang, I really was going through something, but I made it out on the other side and it's just made me a better person. So just try and enjoy the journey as much as possible. That's 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 what I just trying to live by now. Just to piggyback off of what Ashanti said, man, likewise, I mean, I'm, I'm grateful to be uh, in this conversation with you guys and being able to, you know, share, you know, some of the things that I'm working on and what I'm doing and uh, what, seeing what you guys are working on, because that's, you know, that's pretty cool. Like, I didn't know, you know, Ashanti had been at it for uh, so many years, and I think it's pretty dope, man, because now, you know, if I see commercials or movies and stuff, I'm seeing one of my brothers, you know what I mean? So I think it's pretty cool. Um, Gene, I want to appreciate you, man, just for reaching out to me, man, because it's been a long time. We've talked about, you know, these conversations and trying to uh, connect, you know, a while back, but I'm, I'm grateful that it happened, you know, to say the least. And then, uh, Andrew, I appreciate you, man, also just uh, for coming in and, you know, helping us be, you know, become more informative and also uh, just a little bit more knowledgeable about the game. Obviously, you put the work in and, you know, we're trying to do the same. So, you know, in a way, we're following your footsteps, too. So, uh, well, I'll try to reach out and hopefully we can connect soon. You know, this is step one. So hopefully we can we can build off of this moving forward. And and Gene, appreciate you. Big yes, sir. Yes, sure. sir. yes, sir. For sure. Um, you know, guys, like like all of us, I man, I love Georgetown. You know, I love I I'm I feel so grateful for those four years of my life. Um and having experiences like this, talking to you all is is part of the 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 joy of being part of that community for me. And, you know, my, if I can, if I can share part of my journey with other Hoyas and, and, and help them, you know, uh, in any way, um, I'm grateful and happy to do it. You know, uh, Shanti, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for what's ahead for you with what you're doing in your career. DSR, I mean, I can see the, the, the excitement behind all of it with you and, and Gene, you're, you know, you're the the, the 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 grand wizard putting this all together and getting every you know getting all these connections because you have a deep and authentic affinity and and passion for this community and this and this school and it and it comes through man and and I'm I'm honored to be a part of you know this process with you and I look forward to to continuing on with it because I think as you've said and as we've said it's an incredible place Georgetown and I think you know, we, if we continue to make strides, we continue to build bridges and, um, and have a sense of urgency about that, I think we'll see some amazing things happen. So thank you. Great, great parting words. If you can bear with me, I have a few shout outs because I'm old and I always forget. And I feel horrible because again, um, 
this this is this is a family and, 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 and as dysfunctional as it may be it's our family um so i'm just going to start with andrew shout out appreciate you um 1789 conversation you mentioned the mercedes benz and your girlfriend at the time so i want to give your wife a shout out uh nadine watt um you know Great guy, uh, Georgetown couple. I just wanted to applaud you um, on that tip. On that tip, uh, and he's smiling because he's like, "This dude did a little homework." <laughs> so that's a good look, Ashanti. Uh, nothing but love for you, dude. I noticed you didn't mention hooking up with me in LA, but that's okay. I'm out here. I understand. I understand. I understand. I, I, I mean, DSR is that dude. Uh, DSR. Uh, ah, Dave, we got to get together too, man. Well, and we, we're getting together with the whole LA Hoya crew. Right. We're not talking about basketball. Yeah. And we're going to make that happen. DSR, man, I, I would have loved to have hooped with you. Um, I think your, your flow, I think your, 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 just, your, just, just your way, um, I think you're going to be incredible. Uh, I know you're going to put in the work. And I'm still trying to figure out how you had 500 rebounds in your career, dog. Uh, <laughs> so all, all heart man it's all heart, heart. It's so all I, 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 I applaud you guys um and, and thank you very much um again you guys make this you make this go all the guests make this go and i'm gonna keep pushing this thing until somebody younger comes in and, and snatches it from me because i think we as a university um and you kind of touched on it but you know the Diversity is an overused word these days, but eclectic, call it hodgepodge. Call, I mean, Georgetown is all of those things and it's evolving and ever changing. The history is, is not clean, but nobody's clean. And the fact that we're always trying to get better, that's what it's about. Um, so I embrace it. Um, and just like I embrace all of you and I hope you guys hit Andrew up because he's available. Um, sometimes he gets a little busy, but for the most part, he's available. And Hoya salute. Good luck to the crew today. I'm not predicting or expecting to win, but I do expect increased energy and effort. Right? That's, uh, that's what it's about. So uh, we'll check you out, DSR. Appreciate all of you. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Nothing but love for y'all. Hoya salute. Appreciate you guys, man. Appreciate Thank you, guys. Thank you.